Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. We're excited to have one of our partners on today with us, Chris Austin from Easy Stock. And Chris will be presenting on how to manage inventory availability during shortages. And as a reminder, we are recording this webinar and we will post it to our on-demand webinar library for you to review again or share with anyone. And we encourage you to ask questions during our presentation. So please feel free to type them into the questions box and we will answer them at the end of our session. So now I will turn it over to Chris to kick off our presentation. Thanks, Angie. I appreciate it. And uh, welcome, everyone, to Easy Stocks webinar, How to Manage Inventory Availability During Shortages, hosted by Anovia. Uh, my name is Chris Austin. As Angie said, I'm a customer success manager uh, out of Chicago. Um, today, I'm going to be addressing recent impacts on supply chains, both to supply and demand, and detailing how you can best handle your inventory management along with an inventory optimization solution like Easy Stock that's going to help you mitigate the worst of those effects. I'm going to go ahead and flip off my camera now, but I wanted to introduce myself at least on the onset of this call. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start off with the story so far. The last few years have brought demand and supply um, chain volatility heavily impacted by global events. Let's take a look at some of the events that have had the largest impact. Um, the U.S.-China trade war. So kicked off in 2018 by then President Trump, the trade war between the U.S. and China was the U.S.'s, US's response to China's perceived unfair economic policies, alleged intellectual property theft, and attempt to lessen the U.S.'s trade deficit. The result was multiple rounds of retaliatory tariffs being imposed by both countries on seemingly everything. For Chinese exports, the U.S. increased tariffs on everything from telecommunications equipment, circuit boards, uh, processing units to car parts, to furniture, to tiles, and beyond. Uh, for American exports, China increased tariffs on goods including vegetables, chemicals, whiskey, we're talking tariffs on hundreds of billions of dollars worth of goods on either side. China still maintains tariffs on 58.3 of its imports from the United States. The United States still imposes tariffs on 66.4 of the products it brings from China, according to the Peterson Institute for International Economics. The Biden administration is currently keeping those tariffs in place to hold China accountable. This has brought higher costs to businesses in both countries and can continually disrupted the supply chain in 2018. First, U.S. COVID-19 lockdown is the next uh, step here. On the, on the heels of the trade war came the first U.S. COVID-19 lockdown in March 2020. I don't need to go into much detail here, as we're, as we're all aware. Uh, the changes to demand um, that lockdown brought, depending on the business and goods, Demand either surged wildly, as such as home office equipment, home gym equipment, toilet paper, or disappeared overnight as customer habits changed drastically. Globally, no one has, uh, was prepared for such sudden changes. Stockouts and shortages were in incredibly common in those first few weeks and even months. Even now, we've regained at least a little equilibrium and normalcy with the COVID vaccine. People and companies are trying to struggle, are struggling to determine what their future habits will look like and this is still impacting demand in particular. Let's look at container shortages. In early 2021, new effects of the pandemic and subsequent closures showed up in the form of container shortages. This is a bit of a misnomer, really. The problem isn't necessarily a lack of shipping containers. The problem is that the shipping containers are not in the right places. After port closures toward the end of 2019 in supplier regions, including China, Due to the pandemic, ship, ships are already en route, were forced to dump ships contain, shipping containers full of goods at new ports. But then, due to the pandemic restrictions, couldn't refill and ship those containers elsewhere. Other delays have caused empty containers to be left behind. The end result of all this chaos is week-long delays and skyrocketing prices for shipping containers. Also, the Suez Canal blockage. On top of the shipping container shortage came the blockage of the Suez Canal, one of the world's most trafficked, trafficked shipping lanes. An estimated 400 million worth of goods flows through the canal every hour by one of the world's largest cargo ships for six days was blocked. The impact due to the supply chain was obviously devastating. This blockage resulted in an estimated 54 billion in trade losses and recovery, recovery will take months at the very least. Uh, lastly here, high prices of raw materials, additional tariffs, high demand, container shortages, and disrupted supply chain have culminated in high prices for raw materials. Raw material prices are expected to average 10% higher this year compared to 2020. 
before stabilizing in 2022, according to the World Bank's Commodity Markets Outlook. So what have all these challenges led to? Stock shortages and high prices coupled with unhappy customers have resulted in stressed out supply and inventory procurement teams. Honestly, I can't blame them. These challenges and supply chain disruptions are here to stay for at least another six months, very likely even longer. So here are a few tips on how these stressed out teams can best manage their inventory availability. Step one, be extra nice to your suppliers. Competition for inventory is obviously at the highest it's ever been. Cultivate those supplier relationships. As the saying goes, you'll catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Only ask for the stock you absolutely need and give suppliers as much information about your requirements as possible. Communication is always key. Notify your suppliers early on what they can expect with a, with a, month order, with a monthly order schedule. Finally, manage your expectations. Shortages and delays are the order of the day globally. Work closely with your suppliers to agree on what is feasible in any future procurement. So also keep in mind that Easy Stock has uh, supplier calendars that you can implement. So if you have to uh, stay on, on a calendar to the supplier, maybe they give you a forecast for the future months, you can actually plug that into Easy Stock, making sure that you're fo following that calendar very closely. You can see what all the future orders look like. You can stay on top of any buffer stock, any kind of safety stock needs, making sure that you have the right stock at the right times is a big part of what we're gonna help you with with those supplier calendars. Step two is make sure that you are prioritizing the right stock. This involves classifying your inventory items to optimize your star, stock. Start by working with all the areas within your company to determine which items are business critical. Maybe these are production critical components. Maybe they're inventory for contracted customers. Maybe they're your they're most profitable products. Maybe they're a combination of all of those. One of the most common methods is using the ABC analysis. It typically, inventory items follow the Prieto principle. 80% of your sales come from about 20% of your inventory items. That 20% becomes your A list, and those items are your highest priority. So keep that in mind that we will help you classify your items in this ABC matrix. You can see here that we work with you very closely to build a stocking policy. We, we weigh your investment towards your availability. The idea here is to have the lowest investment for the greatest availability. And all the white boxes in this matrix here would represent non-stocked items, and all the blue boxes represent stocked items. And then you look at how often those items are being sold throughout the year, as well as that value of their usage, as I mentioned. Obviously, understanding that if an item is a low value but has a high sales frequency, you would probably want to have that type of item stocked at a higher targeted service level because it is cheap to buy, but you do sell it often. But maybe for those items that you only sell once or twice a year that are very expensive to keep stocked, you don't necessarily need to have those stocked at all times because you can order on demand for those type of goods. Obviously, it's going to be very expensive to keep an item on the shelf that you're only ordering once per year that is maybe one of your most expensive items. So keep that in, 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 uh, in uh, mind that we will help you plug your items, build a stocking policy into our matrix, and give you an idea of what you should stock. And this is what that matrix would look like. So you can see here, we would help you figure out what boxes to check. We can simulate different um, scenarios as well. So if you don't want to stock any items that only have one or two sales a year without changing the principle completely, what you can do is simulate that, see what your new stocking policy looks like, your new targeted service level numbers, making sure that you're on top of all of the items that should be stocked at any given time. This, I mean, the items do move around the matrix as they live in the system. So do keep in mind that we'll help you figure out where they're moving, what their value is, how many times they're being sold, and classifying those in easy stock is something that you're gonna do um, with us very closely. So do keep that in mind. Step three, track your risk of run out key performance indicators. Know your inventory and know which items are at the highest risk of run out. The easiest way to handle this is by generating a risk of run out report using your current stock levels, demand and forecast, and the current lead times. With this data, you can determine when the stock is projected to fall below a certain point. And from there, you can prioritize your critical stock items based on whatever parameters you have decided. To generate a risk of runout report for your inventory, you'll need an accurate inventory data and forecast so you can regularly update your report. 
It is difficult to keep track manually, especially with the current level of volatility in supply chains. But mitigating stockouts before they happen instead of scrambling for inventory after the fact can help you keep your business running smoothly. So do keep in mind that we will have these KPIs that allow you to drill into your inventory on day one, looking at all of the gaps, all of the areas of concern. Maybe you need to figure, figure out what critical items need to be stocked at a higher level. Maybe you need to see that matrix and understand that you need to change any policy if that is the case. We will help you manage by exception and stay on top of any of those areas. So do keep in mind that once you know which of your critical items are at the highest risk of running out, you, you can proactively address those items by moving inventory from elsewhere in your business. If you already have inventory just at a different location where its demand isn't as high, save money and free up working capital by redistributing it to where it's needed. Next, fast track an emergency order or a different from a different supplier. For your critical items, typically revenue will justify the cost of a rush order, though this is something you should evaluate. Additionally, revenue is the only consideration. Reputation is on the line as well when it comes to fulfillment. If you already know what your current supplier isn't going to be able to fulfill your order in time because you've established a good relationship with them and communicated clearly, then the risk of runout report buys you extra time to source from a different supplier for what you need. Increase e-commerce prices to lower demand and remove the items or the item from your website. If you're running low on an item, you can proactively slow your demand while waiting for you to for, for it to restock by increasing your prices or by removing it from your e-commerce website altogether until it's back in stock. This way customers won't see the dreaded out of stock, you might even turn a higher profit in that case. Another uh, idea is hold back inventory for key accounts. Along with your priority items, who are your priority customers? More on that in the next tip. Inform customers in advance so they can make other arrangements. Obviously, communication is key, as I've said, at both ends of your supply chain, both upfront with your customers about the inventory. This could even help you retain customers in the long run as they'll appreciate you looking out for them and being honest. As I've mentioned, it's all about building the relationship, understanding that you guys are on the same team here. You're both trying to grow your business. So do keep in mind that we have this risk out run up report here in Easy Stock. It'll take a look at all of those items, the largest shortfalls, so which ones have you know the most money over that lead time that you might run out of. So do keep in mind that you can look at all of the items in any warehouse, the largest shortfall items, and making sure that you're understanding this risk of runout report is going to help you look at that lead time and making sure you're not running over goods or running out of goods over that lead time. Tip four, allocate stock intelligently. Make optimum use of the inventory you do have in your supply chain. Figure out what excess stock you have and use that data to prevent branches from over ordering, especially if you have excess stock of non-critical items. Keep everyone sticking to their forecasts. Also, understand your inventory limitations with that risk of runout report and make informed decisions on what you do with your remaining limited stock. Do you give it to the customers that give you the highest margin, customers that take it the biggest volumes, customers doing the most worthwhile projects? Determine your priority customers however you'd like, then follow through on treating them like priority customers with first crack at your available inventory. So you can see here that we also have redistribution in Easy Stock. We, we will obviously have those recommended orders. So if you're an inventory planner and you come into the system on a daily basis, you're obviously going to want to come into the recommended order screen and see what Easy Stock is suggesting. With our redistribution functionality, we do have a way that you can reallocate excess stock in other areas. I think a big part of what most of the customers that I talk to, at least the ones that we bring on board, at least initially, they have multi, if they have multiple warehouses, they probably have excess stock. They're definitely going to have transfer and redistribution options within that stock. Mm -hmm. So really freeing up capital in that stock is the way that Easy Stock is going to help you, you know, release capital in other areas and focus on the most egregious items that you need to look at. But when you have a system that's going to take a look at a recommended order and say, hey, you can order from the supplier or you can order from warehouse B, sharing some of that excess stock, it's going to obviously make you more efficient. It's going to help, as I said, release capital and focus on parts of the business that might need more of your attention. So do keep in mind that the, this redistribution model is very robust. It's going to give you all of these suggested um, orders right away. 
managed by exception coming into a system and it's going to tell you how and when to act. Okay, so tip five, up your forecasting game. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of accurate forecasts, but I also know what a special challenge it is these days to generate an accurate forecast. Forecasting is more than just looking at your previous period and reordering based on that. Here are some rules and considerations that go into accurate forecasts. Find a similar sales period in history to base the current forecast on. So for example, if you're starting to see growth for a particular item, find a corresponding historical period to model your forecast after. How does that item tend to grow? Looking at that trend can really help you understand what the past sales have looked like and what you might expect in the future. Use insights from sales teams and branches and customers. These are the people on the front line, so to speak. They know what customers you know what customers are asking for and what they'll need in the future. You can think of communicating with your customers like you can communicate with your suppliers. They're trying to source what they need as well. If they already know what know the future orders, keep that line of commu communication open and use that to feed your own forecasts. Look for emerging sales trends. So for example, are newer models emerging? Alternatively, is the marketplace for certain items booming? Take sales trends in consideration when generating your forecast. Add seasonality. This year will not be exempt from seasonal demand. Identify your seasonal items and be sure to include that your forecast when their uh, time comes. Remove periods of stockouts in the last six to 12 months from your forecast. This could be a tip all on its own, but it's a key part of forecasting on, in this current chaos. Over the past six to 12 months, you will most likely have experienced periods when items have been out of stock. Make sure you exclude these from your forecasts or they will incorrectly bring them down overall. For example, if you have a period where you've only sold 10 of one item because that's all you had in stock, where you could have actually sold 200 with the right availability, make sure you don't reorder based on that forecast that's looking at the lower number. Flag periods for exclusion or even better, make an assumption about the sales you lost and add this number into the forecast. So as I mentioned, we're a managed by exception tool. You can go in there and massage the system to read what you think it should look like. So if the sales of 2020 are in line with what your sales normally look like, maybe we need to look at 2019 and add those sales as the past forecast. Adjust forecasts accordingly. Always use the latest data available to generate your forecast. New data, take a look at your forecast and revise it if needed. Obviously, more up-to-date data is going to give us better figures in the long run. Ensure all departments are regular, regularly communicating and feeding back. What do they need? What do they sell? What do they see happening in the future? The more data you have, the more accurate your forecast should be. Obviously, in the future, we want to add as much as we can. It's really going to help us you know, be in line with our efficiency targets in the coming months. As you see here, this is the automatic high accuracy forecasting that you'll get in Easy Stock. So when we do pull in your items, we divide the items into nine different categories based on the demand type. So slumpy or slow, lumpy, fast, you know, all based on historical sales. Then we will, or we will build a forecast based on that demand type. So obviously, uh, a seasonal type product, maybe a lumpy item, is going to have a completely different forecast algorithm than an item that's fast or a positive trend. Now, why is this important? Obviously, a lumpy and fast item require much different forecast calculations um, for the same yearly volume. And the big difference that an, if an item sells 10 each month, a fast mover, and then goes to selling zero and 30 in other months, and then to zero, maybe that's a lumpy type item. So you need to understand safety stock calculations are not gonna be the same for those type of items. And as the items grow in their life cycle in the system, Easy Stock will catch those trends, telling you if it's going from positive to slow, maybe from dying to um, uh, positive. So all of those different ways Easy Stock can determine how you should al uh, be alerted on your demand type classification changes. And this gives us an automated forecasting look at what goes into the forecast. So as I've mentioned, we do have that base forecast uh, also based off the historical sales. So looking at all past sales on any item. And then on top of that, we have trend. Then we'll take a, take a look at any trend items, making sure we're not getting a too high or too low. On top of the base and trend, we also have seasonal factors. So the easy stock will look at every single item 
and automatically tell us if it is being considered seasonal. It will not apply that seasonal factor unless it is above a certain threshold. So if it is, if it's above a certain fitness level, we can have that automatically turned on. And then on top of that, so we have all of this managed by exception, you know, all this automation in this in the tool itself but you have manual inputs as well. So if you know that you need to add a promotion or a campaign in the summer because you know that sales are gonna to start to increase, you have the ability to massage the system. So as I've mentioned, the system's gonna tell you how and when to act, but you do have the ability to put your own spin or your own touch on any specific item or any group of items to make sure that it reads what you expect the future sales to look like. Do keep that in mind that you can adjust any of those figures. Okay, step six, when supply chain disruption is a major concern, it goes without saying that you need to closely monitor your lead times. Having full visibility of your suppliers, delivery performance is key to mitigating its impact on fulfillment. Where possible, track actual lead times and act when they begin to deviate from your expectations. Actions may include increasing safety stock levels. While this will result in more cash being tied up in stock, this should only be in the interim measure, and you can look to reduce stock levels again when your supplier's availability improves. Shortening order cycles. If it's possible, order less stock more frequently. Shorter order cycles will help you keep a closer eye on your stock levels and reduce the stock, the stock out risks associated with big order being delayed. Switching suppliers, this will also be in the next section, but some stock movement systems have the functionality to take a supplier lead time into account when calculating reorder points. If resources allow, you should find time to manually update these lead times as often, as often as possible, even if you just focus on your most profitable or business critical items. It's definitely important to understand that the lead times affect a lot of these numbers in the system. Obviously, they're gonna affect when you get the product and how often you need to reorder. So making sure that you do have updated lead times is very important. Obviously, we're pulling over a static lead time. We do have some dynamic lead time functionality that, that I think we'll get into in a few slides here. So this is the lead time analysis in Easy Stock. Obviously, we're gonna be uh, having a lead time on every single item, but as the dynamic lead time is changing, you need to stay on top of that. Obviously, it's gonna affect ordering. It's gonna affect buffer stock numbers. So definitely make sure that you're, you're looking at that lead time so you understand where the capital is going to be needed in the future. Step seven, diversify your supplier network. Many companies are realizing that it's time to hedge their bets and source their goods from more than one supplier. Using param partners strategically located across the world means that issues arise in one country, there's an alternative on hand. If you have a broad supplier base, you need to continually reevaluate it to ensure you're getting the best deal in terms of unit costs, delivery speed, and reliability. Compare suppliers based on criteria that's important to your purchasing needs. This could be their lead times, unit prices, or minimum order quantities. Some stock management systems will offer this information prior to placing an order, but be sure that you update the system with the most up-to-date data to make the most informed decisions. Maximizing your supplier options for your highest priority items. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. And this goes for your highest priority items as well. Fulfillment, fulfillment failure on the part of your supplier can have devastating effects on your supply chain. Don't ignore supplier location. When you evaluate a new supplier or even your existing supplier, make sure you're keeping in mind their supply chain as well. How easily can they resource raw materials? What additional costs do you incur with shipping? What threats are there to the supplier fulfilling your orders? While Easy Stock doesn't have a screen for supplier comparison, the solution, the solution does store the data on the suppliers that you need to help guide your decisions, including that lead time, supplier calendars, and much more. Okay, step eight. Step eight, optimize your shipping. If you're importing goods into the US, you need to make every shipment count. For example, if you're bringing shipping containers to the US on long lead time, be sure to check that every item coming over has an upcoming demand to fill. Don't let suppliers ship half full containers. Don't let them fill up with items that are not business critical. Go back to your order schedule and check that the shipment reflects your forecast needs. Alternatively, businesses who 
buy closer to home have different challenges. If you deal with smaller local deliveries, you most likely have minimum order values or quantities to hit for lower freight costs. While you want to avoid the additional delivery cost, make sure the order only includes goods that you know are needed in your sales and production projections. Otherwise, you're simply filling up your warehouse and investing, investing much needed working capital in items that your business can do without. So we do have the order fill up functionality in our system that will allow you to meet a lot of those minimums. So you can see here that you can uh, meet minimum total values, minimum total volumes, if that's something that you're using in your business, or even weight. And that's gonna help us look at the current order. So when you come into the recommended order screen, obviously there's gonna be the recommendations on day one saying these are what you need to order now. But when you use the order fill up functionality, what that does is it actually takes a look at the projected orders from whatever supplier you're looking at and saying, okay, well, you're gonna order from a supplier today. We also see that there's five more orders in the next two weeks. If we fill this order up now, you're going to save a ton of money by having to you know, rush these orders in the coming weeks. It's going to make this order as filled up and as much robust as it can be. Obviously, the efficiency is going to increase when you have a functionality like that, staying on top of those minimums, making sure you're, you're ordering as much from the supplier at any given time is going to be a, a way to be successful, obviously. So keep that in mind that this order fill up functionality is a great way to meet any of those minimum requirements. Okay, step nine, let the computers do the computing. Investment in technology is critical to help you manage your supply chain during periods of severe disruption. It will also keep you one step ahead of the competition as we move into a new era of trading. And here's why. Tech, make business, tech makes businesses responsive and agile. Better systems will give your team the visibility and control it needs to manage the moving parts of your supply chain. When challenges arise, Software such as warehouse management systems and inventory control tools are invaluable, providing the data and capabilities to act quickly and decisively. Tech increases efficiency. Busy inventory managers will save valuable time by automating everyday manual tasks. Instead of spending hours calculating safety stock levels or updating supplier lead times, they can focus their energy on value adding tasks. Tech also gives you more time for customers and suppliers. With more efficient processes, teams will have time to communicate with customers, manage their expectations, and solve their issues. During times of disrupted supply, these are critical tasks that help maintain and reinforce relationships. Tech improves decision-making. Digital supply chains ensure data transparency and improve data accuracy with accurate, up-to-date information. Decisions can be based on facts, and not guesswork. Obviously, we want facts. We don't want to, you know, take educated guesses, looking at spreadsheets, you know, pulling up past sales. We need a system that's going to help us manage by exception, look at all of those egregious errors, maybe focus on those outliers, and really understand that that's what goes into the day-to-day -day inventory management of any successful business. So we've talked about a few of these areas, but I think it's it's important to, to take it to the next step in, in understanding that we have these four modular processes that we run on a daily basis. We did talk about the division of all of your items into these nine demand types, alerting you when they do change from one demand type to the other. They're all based on certain uh, parameters in the system. So do keep in mind if you have an obsolete item with has no sales in a certain period of time, we can implement, implement that into the system depending on what you consider a dead or dying stock. The second part after the forecasting is the inventory optimization matrix that we've talked about. Understanding that you need to stock your items accurately. As they move, as they grow demand, they are gonna change their value and their pick frequency. So you need to see what those sales look like from month to month. Maybe you need to change your stocking policy. Maybe you need to make a new stocking policy for all those critical items. That's the way that the easy stock's gonna allow you to stay on top of the way that they're moving around in the matrix, looking at the value, looking at their sales frequency throughout a rolling 12 months. That's how you're gonna stay on top of how you should stock your goods. Looking at replenishment and multi-site planning. So I did mention you know, the different recommendations telling you where the excess stock lies, but it also allows you to look at the point of sale aggregation. 
Maybe you have demand coming from a warehouse, but you need to roll that into another warehouse. That's another way that Easy Stock can help you understand where the orders are coming from. You need to understand that demand is very important as far as where that demand is housed. If you have a multi-warehouse system, you need to know where demand is coming from, how that demand needs to be transferred from stock from location to location. Maybe you have vans and trucks. Maybe the demand resides there. So understanding that we're going to help you build that demand out and give you a replenishment stocking policy for each one of your locations at a very accurate and high level. And then lastly, we have those reports and KPIs. So the KPIs, sales value, stock turn, things like that. But then the high value reports that are available day one in Easy Stock, I think are going to really help you grow your business. That excess stock report, allowing you to see where all the excess is located in all of your inventory, risk of runout report, looking at all of those shortages over lead time. These are ways that you're going to grow your business when you have not had you know, a reliable tool like Easy Stock in the past. We also like to talk a little bit about where we come from. So Easy Stock is the leading inventory optimization app because of the backing of our parent company, Synchron. So Easy Stock is built on Synchron's powerful platform. Synchron provides, amongst other things, inventory optimization for the enterprise size company. So you can see a couple here, Hitachi, Mazda, JCB, Manitowoc. Synchron is a globally supported organization with users in 100 countries and has a strong product development um, with frequent releases. So I think we have 500 plus employees now, half of which are dedicated to that product development. So do keep in mind, we have you know, many different things coming out every year that makes this the most powerful inventory optimization solution in the world. And Easy Stock uses that fame, same powerful technology. It's just slimmed down to meet the needs of the small and mid-sized business. Still based in the cloud, still in integrates with ERPs. We do have that pre-made connector with Business Central. So do keep in mind, it makes implementation very seamless because we have that connector. Um, but we service a variety of industries, including distribu distributors, wholesalers, retail. Um, and you can see some of the clients that we have on here, Design Ready Controls, John Lewis Home, Old Dash, HVAC Company. So if you have inventory, we can definitely help. Do keep that in mind. I do like to give a little background as far as our parent company because I think it's important to understand that it is a very, very powerful technology that we're built off of. Uh, with all of that said, I think we've kind of wrapped up here. Um, I, I believe we may have gotten some questions, but hopefully this session has given you some new ideas on how you can manage your inventory during these chaotic times. If you'd like more detail on how Easy Stock can support your inventory management, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can see my contact info on the screen. That's my cell phone. Feel free to give me a call, give me a shout, shoot me an email if you do have any questions or needs as far as inventory management, inventory optimization. And Angie, um, I'm gonna hand it back over to you. I'm not sure if we got any uh, questions here, but uh, please let me know. Yes, a um, couple have come through. If anybody has any additional ones, please feel free to get them in the questions box. Great. The first one is, how can we handle changing lead times? Oh, great question. Okay, uh, yeah, so I think I briefly mentioned this as I was going through, but do keep in mind that, you know, as we pull over that static lead time from the ERP, um, that, that will need to be adjusted if the dynamic lead time or if lead time is changing, but we do have that dynamic functionality. As soon as we, t we turn that on, the system is gonna evaluate all of your items, looking at you know, the fulfillment of those when they're delivered, when they're requested, and giving us that lead time uh, more accurately as far as it changing. So when you do see that dynamic lead time adjusting, you can go back into the ERP and make a, an evaluated decision if that needs to be changed. So great question there. Okay, thank you. And we've already been, oh, I'm sorry, we've already seen interruption to our supply for certain items. How can we handle those items going forward? Yeah, yeah. So I would, I mean, obviously, as I mentioned a bunch of times, we're a managed by exception tool. So when those items do, are, when they are interrupted, our system's probably going to alert you. Uh, they're probably going to show up on the risk of runout report. It's going to help you prioritize, you know, the highest shortfall items, the ones that you need to act immediately on. Same thing with the excess stock report. It's going to allow you to see the items that have the most excess, allows you to drill down to those items right away. Obviously, the ones with the most risk of runout are going to be the ones you need to act on right away. Definitely something that you can handle on day one with that report. Okay, thank you. And the last one is, we can't get all the inventory that we need right now. 
how are we supposed to fulfill our orders? Okay. Um, I mean, one way that we've been doing this with some of our customers is just by redistribution. I mean, using what you already have, it's going to free up warehouse space with that working capital, as I've mentioned. So uh, a lot of the people that we do talk to, probably about 90% do have excess in one area. So using redistribution and, and actually being, uh, you know, having visibility into where that redistribution is, that's a big part of what we're going to help with. So prioritar prioritizing fulfillment, to your most important customers, obviously that's important, but those critical items, those ones that you really want to, you know, focus on, um, you know, the ones that are most egregiously need a fulfillment, those are the ones you can act on right away. Obviously, it's going to help you, um, you know, prioritize that capital and uh, make sure you're on top of those goods. So hopefully that answered the question. And hey, great, thank you. Those, those I think those are all the questions that we have for you today. I just want to thank everyone for attending and thank you, Chris, for the presentation. Thank you so much, Angie. Appreciate it as well. All right. And to let you guys know, um, Easy Stock as well as Anovia Consulting will be at Summit next week in Houston, Texas. So for those that are attending, be sure to stop by our booths and you can speak to our team members. And we do have more webinars coming up the week after summit, we have NAV Payroll that will be presenting on take a deep dive into Primo Payday's employee self-service portal. And then to also let you know, we do have more training workshops for you and your team members to attend. You can visit our training workshop page at anovia.com slash workshops for more information and to register for the training workshop that fits your role. And don't forget about our Anovia Conversation podcast that our hosts, Steve Waltz and Jeff Bergolsky, have provided to us. You can find out about all the different podcast platforms to listen to on our podcast page, and that's anovia.com slash podcast. So browse the selection and subscribe so you'll get notified when those new episodes air. All right, well. Thank you again, Chris, for attending or for presenting. Thank you, everyone who is on or if you're watching on demand. Thank you for uh, taking the time out to watch this. And we hope to see you soon on another Anovia webinar. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everyone. Bye.